Time to open the service with prayer this evening. Just remember to pray for Brother Oxendine and Brother Floyd. Uh, pray God touch them where they can uh, lead their congregations. So remember to pray for Shauna and Sister Jane. Remember to pray for Isaiah, Lord, touch him. Uh, remember Brother Baker's son uh, and Sister Taylor, pray for her. And, uh, the backsliders that we lost from our church, pray that God will bring them back in. We're seeing a lot of people coming in. It'll be a good time for some of our backsliders to come back. Anybody else have any spoken requests? Sister Angela? Yeah, hey, Charlie? Brother Benny. No other spoken prayers to stand. Go, Lord, in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We're coming for you in the same
Praise God. It's good to have Vince, Vince and Carol Cranford here with us this evening. And it's good to have Brother Roddy back with us again tonight. It's right. uh, good to be back in God's house. And this morning it was a good sight when we come pulling in. We had to find another parking spot. Because we, we've had so many new people coming through. Uh, you know, uh, the Holy Ghost is, in the Bible they refer to it as water and fire. You have to have both of them to live and both of them draw a crowd. I believe that a uh, word about how uh, some of these services we've been having, how God's been moving and blessing us, I believe it's uh, drawing people. And, uh, this is the time that we're getting new people coming in, and it could be a time that we can add to the church. So we can't afford to have a, a dry service or one that the fire doesn't come down in because we don't know who's going to come through that needs to hear that needs to be convicted. That it needs that convicted spirit of the Lord. So let's let's not have one here tonight. Let's not start having bad services. And, uh, let's worship him again here. The scene in the way that he deserves to be worshipped. Uh, this worship in spirit and truth is Sister Shelton come uh, listen to the congregation. If you want to stand with us, we'll sing one we haven't sung in a while. Jesus, hold my hand. I need him. Don't you? I need him all the time. Hold my hand. Carry me. Whatever he needs to do with me. Uh, let's sing unto him. Yeah. 
there's anybody you need every hour, it's Jesus. And as soon as you try to let go of his hand, one of those fiery darts is going to hit you. So just hold on to him and he'll get you through. And this time we're going to receive our offering for us as you come. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah to God. Brother Zach, you ask the Lord less time to give him. Thank you, Jesus. <coughs> and giving it this time Sister Green and Sister Shelton are going to come answer in song. wake up in the morning of each day that passes by and I listen to the sound upon my ear I can't help but keep a watch toward the eastern sky and I wonder
sometimes you see the sunrise, how beautiful it is. I just think one day we're going to see something more beautiful than that sunrise coming out of the east. Uh, it could be pouring rain, but if Jesus is coming back, that's going to be a beautiful day. This time we're going to hand serve, serve, Pastor Brother Shelton. How many believe Jesus is coming again just like he said? I know what some folks say today. They say, well... We've been hearing that same message for since I was a child all these years, and he still hasn't come yet. Where's the promise of his coming? Peter said in the last days there'll be scoffers, there'll be doubters, there'll be people who don't believe the word of God anymore. That's not going to stop Jesus from coming. When God the Father says to God the Son, go bring my children home, the children of God going to leave this world. And uh, I tell you, it just blesses my heart to see Sister Granny get up here. She's smiling while she's singing. Did you see her? She's happy. She used to play the piano and sing. She can't see the keys anymore. But uh, she still loves to sing and do something for God. Give her a hand of appreciation. <laughs> Amen. It's good to be in the house of God tonight. We appreciate all of you being here. Brother Roddy, good to see you again this evening. Appreciate him. Good to see Vince and Carol back there. Love them. These are fine people. Glad to have you with us tonight. I don't see any strangers here. Hopefully just people that love God want to go to heaven on their way there. Amen. It's good to have Colin back with us tonight. Appreciate this young man. Give all of our visitors a hand of appreciation. Thank you for coming. It's good to be saved. Good to be in the kingdom of God. Good to have our names written in the Lamb's book of life. He said, Rejoice, not because the devils are subject to you through my name, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Amen. On your worst day, we can still rejoice because our names are written in heaven. When things are turned upside down, you can still rejoice because your names are written over there. And I'm telling you, just any day now, a day like today, the Lord's going to come again. All of this is going to fall away. All the headache, heartaches, problems and pains that are associated with life are going to fall away. Now, don't misunderstand me. I don't want, you know, I'm not poor mouthing Christianity. Christians ought to be the happiest people on the earth. Even when things are not happy around us, we ought to be the happiest people. We have been abundantly blessed by God. We know Jesus and Jesus knows us. What a wonderful gift. I told the Lord this afternoon in prayer, Lord, thank you. Thank you for this gift of salvation. Thank you for saving my soul and giving me a want to. <clears throat> when you don't have your want to, you're in trouble. My grandfather used to say, when you lose your desire, you've lost it. You lose your desire for church, for the word, for the things of God, you've lost it. I'm glad God gives us that desire by his grace. Is that right? I'm here tonight because I want to be here. Somebody said, well, you're the preacher. It doesn't matter. I'm here because I want to be here. I'm a Christian. I want to be in church. I'm glad to be in church. Amen. Didn't Brother Bogey and Sister Cindy's family look nice today? They had that whole pew. That pew was screaming, help me, Jesus. Brother Bogey said, I wonder how much this thing can handle, how much weight this thing can take. And uh, <laughs> I like it when the pews are full. Amen. Brianna and their family, they had a load here this morning. We was doing pack a pew. I don't know who would have won that one. Nevertheless, it's good to have people in church. Is that right? We want to get into the Word of God tonight. Going to be a little more deliberate with the subject I'm going to preach on this evening. We're going to go to Leviticus chapter 27, reading verse 30 tonight. God's been dealing my heart about this, and I want to preach what I feel like God's laid on our heart. I believe God will help us, don't you? Glad Brother Benny's doing better. Continue to pray for Sister Brianna's grandmother. There's some others that just need a healing. Pray for David. Keep praying for Brother David. He's getting better. And let's pray God will just completely heal and help him. Pray for Valerie. She needs a touch. Also want to say thank you to Sister Angela. She's been dealing with sickness uh, above and beyond the sickness that she deals with daily. And uh, I was over here Friday and Went over to, the, I saw her van over there, and I knew she was changing the sign. She's the one that does that when that sign's changed. Thank you, Sister Angela. She does it in the dead of summer and the heat, and she'll do it in the dead of winter when it's cold. 
But I uh, went over to the fellowship hall to get to do something and walked in. That building was spotless. She cleaned that building up. And uh, I want you to give her a hand. She didn't do that to be recognized. But the Lord just, the Lord just wrote a note. She'll be rewarded for that. And uh, I, just, I told her, I said, I was so excited to see that building so clean in there. I don't know how long she spent, but it was a good while over there. And I wanted to get some, some ice for my tea, and I kept looking. I thought, well, she's still there, what she's doing. And I hope she hadn't laid down there and died, and I'm going to have to go over there and find her. <laughs> Nevertheless, she was cleaning up, and uh, I'm glad she did that. So thank you, Sister Angela. Appreciate it. It's good to come in the house of God on a Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and the church be clean. Appreciate all those that do that. Amen. It, it takes work, but they do it because they want to do something for God. Leviticus 27, <clears throat> reading verse 30. I'll give you a minute. I heard pages turning. Let's pray. Father, thank you. It's a joy to be in your house again tonight. Thank you for the wonderful singing we just enjoyed hearing songs about you. So good to be able to worship you, God. Thank you for the strength that you've given us to be able to come back to your house tonight. We pray that you will touch the message now. Help this messenger for the next little while. Need your touch as always, God. Can't do anything without you. Don't want to try to stand here by myself, Lord. I need your help now. Hide me behind that cross tonight, Lord. Bless this word. Let it help people. Let it touch people. Let it change people tonight, God. I, I pray for those in this service, in the house of God, those watching online. And we just pray that you'll touch each one. Save the lost, God. Restore the backslider, Lord. Let them come to themselves and realize that their time is running out. I pray for those that need to be sanctified, that you'd sanctify them good. Let them throw some things overboard as we preached about this morning. Pray that you'd fill and refill people with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire, Lord. Pray you'd heal and do what only you have the power to do. And we'll praise you and bless you for it all in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Bible says, now don't you get mad at me, because I'm going to tell you what the Bible says, not my opinion. You preach your opinion, you might as well go sit down. The Bible says, and all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. And then he said, it is holy unto the Lord. And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree, it all belongs to God. It's His. It is holy unto the Lord. May God add his blessings to his red word. <clears throat> now, you helped me pretty good this morning. And uh, I pray you'll help me pretty good again tonight. Praise God. How many, how many knows without me saying anything, we've gone through a pandemic? Been a lot of people have passed away, have died. There's been a lot of churches that's had to close their doors, change the whole, the whole setting of the church and how things are. I told you before, and you know if you've been here, we've had to do services in the parking lot. We've had to have services online only. I'm glad we were able to have services right on. But during that time, I was thinking, I was over in the fellowship hall on Friday, I guess it was, and yesterday as well. And somebody said, I believe Sister... Uh, Sharon said that everything is the same in that fellowship hall. It was last year about this time in March. We had pastor appreciation in that building, and then the pandemic hit, and we hadn't been over there to do anything since, almost a year now. Isn't that amazing how fast time goes by? During this pandemic, I have watched, and I've been so blessed by the way this church has responded, not only in watching online when you couldn't be in the house of God, being in the parking lot services when we couldn't come in here, being here when we've been able to be here, but also the way that you have remained faithful. Many of you have remained faithful in giving God his tithe and the offerings. During that time, some of you, when we couldn't be in service, some of you put those tithes in the mail and sent them in to Sister Blanche, the clerk. 
I come out one one day I was over here studying and working and I came out and Sister Lois had come by unbeknownst to me and had put her tithe in my car, the side of the car. She didn't do it for me to recognize, I'm just telling you what she did. Sister Garen, who wasn't able to be here for such a long time, glad she's back on Sunday mornings now, but she would send her tithe in in an envelope every single month, right on time. Many of you others would come by when you couldn't come in the building with other people. Brother Charlie went back and would put them in Sister Blanche's office. Others had come by and I'd come out to the car and you'd drop them off. Even when you couldn't be faithful to come in the house, though you watched online faithfully, yet you still gave faithfully unto God what belonged to Him because you understood that the tithe is holy unto the Lord. I want to preach about that for a little while. I'm going to try to be a little more deliberate tonight. I don't want you to help me less, but I do want you to listen. I want to use that for a thought as we've read here in Leviticus 27 and verse 30. The tithe is holy unto the Lord. Did you realize that the subject of money uh, was one of the subjects that Jesus spoke most about in the Word of God? Jesus in the New Testament gave us 38 parables, and 16 of those parables concerned money. One out of every six verses in Matthew, Mark, and Luke uh, deals with a person and how they handle the money. We find that there are about 500 verses on prayer, fewer than 500 verses on faith, uh, but there are more than 2,000 verses about money in that New Testament. What I'm telling you is this. Jesus had more to say about money than he did about heaven. Jesus had more to say about money than he did hell. Matter of fact, if you study the Bible, you'll find that Jesus had more to say about money than he did any other subject in that Word of God. Now, if the Lord thinks this much about giving, concerning giving, uh, and had more to say about that than any other subject, uh, then I believe we as the Christians are to take heed uh, to the Word and, and very seriousness of our giving when it comes to the things of God. I think that we ought to be serious and take it serious in what we give and when we give and why we give. He said in Leviticus 27 and 30, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land or of the fruit of the tree, it is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. Now, you've been around church any time at all. You know that the word tithe, it means one-tenth. And the Lord has honored this system of supporting the gospel for many centuries. Matter of fact, tithing can be traced into almost every country of importance uh, in that ancient world. There's no definite declaration of when tithing began. We know in the Bible uh, that even before God gave Moses the law, uh, we know that Abraham tithed under Melchizedek. There's no definite declaration of when tithing began. Uh, but we do know according to the Word of God uh, that it is an ordinance of God. Now I know when preachers start preaching about money, some people draw up tight. He's just a money preacher. Listen, I'm not after your money. I can tell you that. I'm just telling you what the Bible says about what we do with God's money. And when we study the historical records concerning tithing, uh, Men recognize this as the duty to God uh, to offer him a portion of their substance uh, even before Bible days. There are ancient records of picture writings found on temple walls and tombs and monuments and tablets uh, that is documented proof uh, that tithing existed even among the pagans uh, 4,000 years before Christianity appeared. That tells us that there is a feeling of obligation uh, to God that seems to be inherent uh, in man. In other words, uh, God put something in man when God created man uh, that caused him to feel obligated uh, to give to God of their substance. Can you say amen? Since those pagans did not know the true and living God, Jehovah, they paid tithe to their gods. 
we as Christians, we know who God is. And we serve the true and the living God. And I believe if we call ourselves Christians that we should be concerned with every thus saith the Lord in the word of God. I remember years ago in the old building preaching a, a sermon on tithing. God had laid on my heart and I remember there was a, a couple in that service. Somebody had invited them. They'd been coming for just a few services at that time. And after that service, they never came back to church again. Well, you know, I'm not trying to be ugly, but I, I'm just telling you the next service, we were back in service. Amen. And sometime later I found out, uh, it was told to me the reason they didn't come back uh, is because I preached on tithing uh, and they didn't believe on tithing. And I told that, that man that told me, I said, listen to me, sir. You know, he kind of got a little gruff with me. I said, listen to me. I'm not up here preaching my opinion or my thoughts. I, I'm just telling you what the Word of God says. If you don't believe in tithing, that has nothing to do with me. That's between you and God and you stand before God for it one day. I'm not going to stop preaching the word just because you don't believe what I'm preaching. I, because if you don't believe what I'm preaching about tithing, then you don't believe the word of God. Come on, say amen. We find in the Old Testament that is full of command after command concerning tithing. I, that it is an expression of God's ownership, I, an expression of man's stewardship. When we come to the subject of tithing, we have to realize ultimately that everything belongs to God. There's nothing that you have that does not belong to Him. He owns the house that you live in. He owns the car that you drive. He owns the clothes on your back and the clothes in your closet. He owns the, he owns the money in your bank account right now. And whatever you may have in your wallet or your pocketbook, everything that you own really belongs to God. God's just letting you use it. Can you say praise the Lord? Everything belongs to the Lord. The Bible said in Psalms 24 and 1, The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and all they that dwell therein. Psalms 95 and 5 said the sea is his and he made it and his hands formed the dry land. Haggai 2 and 8 says the silver is mine and the gold is mine saith the Lord of hosts. When we tithe unto the Lord, when we give that one tenth unto God, when we give what belongs to Him, we are simply saying that we recognize and we acknowledge that God is the owner and God is the giver of all things. I'm telling you, it bothers me to see people sit down at a meal in a restaurant and won't take three minutes to stop and bless God for that meal. It bothers me to see people in church uh, who God's blessed so richly and God's been so good to uh, that won't give Him thanks and give Him praise. Uh, but when we tithe, when we give that offering unto the Lord and we render that tithe to Him, uh, we're saying, God, we acknowledge and we recognize uh, that You are the owner of everything. Matter of fact, uh, He holds the very, our very breath in the palm uh, of His hand and we acknowledge uh, that every good and every perfect gift in our life it does not come from your boss man it doesn't come from the White House it doesn't come from mom and daddy but it comes from the God in heaven the God of glory who sits on high and he looks down low can you give him a hand of praise tonight Woo! he's the owner of everything he's the giver of everything hey man the Jews Gave the first fruits of their harvest unto God. As recognition that God was the giver of that harvest. They gave their firstborn to God. As recognition that God is the giver of this life. In the New Testament Jesus came along and commanded us. To bring and to give to God the things that are God's. Only when we begin to realize and understand that God owns everything uh, and that everything comes from God. Listen to me. Uh, just as sure as God can give it, uh, God can take it away. 
Job said the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But then he went on and said, but blessed be the name of the Lord. Can you say amen? When we recognize that God owns everything and that every gift, everything that we have comes from Him, uh, then we'll be able to give to Him with the right heart and the right attitude uh, the things that He commands us to give. He said here, And all the tithe of the land, whether the seed of the land or the fruit of the tree is the Lord's, uh, it is holy unto the Lord. I want you to realize here tonight that tithing uh, is the first step in stewardship. The word stewardship means being responsible for something. The careful and responsible management of something entrusted into one's care. The Bible shows us that God, uh, He's the giver of what we have. Uh, and God expects us to be good stewards uh, of everything that He gives unto us. We are to be responsible with what God has given us uh, and we are to manage it carefully uh, by obeying His holy word. Somebody said, well, Brother Shelton, I, I made a sacrifice uh, and I gave God His tithe. But I'm telling you, uh, according to the Bible, when you give God the tithe, uh, we have sacrificed nothing, uh, but we're merely fulfilling the obligation to God uh, because the tithe does not belong to you uh, and the tithe does not belong to me. Uh, the tithe belongs to the Lord. Uh, it is holy unto God. I remember years ago, a man in this church, he didn't pay tithes like he was supposed to. I know, listen to me, you can ask Sister Blanche, I know she knows who pays tithes and who don't. I don't have to see that report every week to know who does that. But listen, greater than that, God knows. I said God keeps a record of all of it. He knows, and we had a man in this church years ago that, you know, he wasn't paying his tithe. And every time I'd preach on it, I don't preach on it often unless God tell me to, then I'm going to stand up and preach what he says. But when I'd preach on that, he'd get real quiet. He'd look his head down. He wouldn't look me in the eyes, you know. And finally, I guess he got to, you know, God got to dealing with him and convicted him about it. And he started paying the tithe. And he, he'd get that tithing envelope. And he'd make sure every time he put it in that plate that I saw it. I mean, he'd hold it up. He wanted to make sure I knew that he was putting that tithe in that offering plate. And I thought, dear God, you don't need to try to impress me me with that uh, you just need to make sure you're doing right by what God said uh, and obeying, uh, being obedient to the word of God and I thought you're trying to impress me you better be more concerned about God that you're giving it for the right reason and giving it the right way the Bible makes it clear here tonight that anyone who keeps that portion that belongs to God and uses it for their own benefit and uses it for their own carnal purposes. Uh, the Bible said they are under a curse. Now I've never understood why people would say I, I just can't afford to give God what belongs to Him. I want to give God His tithe, but I, I just can't afford it. When I figure up everything that's got to go out, uh, we figure up what we make and what, you know, uh, we've got to pay. We just don't have enough uh, to give God His. Uh, do you know some of them very same people? Uh, hey Amen. They'll call their, their uh, telephone provider, their cell phone provider, uh, and say, listen, I've not got enough data here. Uh, give me the next plan up. Give me two plans above that. Uh, come on, say amen to me. Uh, They'll call that direct TV and say, listen, I, I don't have enough channels on here. I, I want all the channels. I, well, it's going to cost you more money. That's all right. I, listen to me. I, I preached this morning I, on following Jesus faithfully. I, and I believe this is part I, of being faithful unto the Lord. I, I believe God's got to be first I, in your finances. I said, I believe God's got to be first I, when it comes to what we give. I, and if you put God first, First, uh, he'll always take care of every need. The Bible makes it clear that if you keep that portion, if I keep that portion that belongs to God, I put myself under a curse. Malachi 3, 8 through 12 says, Will a man rob God? Nobody wants to stand up and say, Hey, I will. I'll rob God. Will a man rob God? But ye have said, Wherein have we robbed thee? 
He said, in tithes and offerings, ye are cursed with a curse. For ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. He said, bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. This is the only occasion in the word of God where God challenges his people uh, to prove him. It was in their giving. It was to deal with the finances. Uh, he said, prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, uh, if I will not open you the windows of heaven uh, and pour ye out a blessing uh, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Uh, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Uh, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Uh, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Uh, and all nations shall call ye blessed for ye shall be a delightsome land saith the Lord of hosts. I'm telling you there are some folks in our churches that are stuck in a rut they're stuck in the same old place year after year they never gain ground they never go forward simply because they rob God of what's rightfully his what belongs to him but he said if you will give to me what belongs to me see if I I won't open up the windows uh, and pour you out a blessing uh, that there's not room uh, for you to be able to withstand it. Can you say man tonight? Hallelujah to God. We don't give to get. But when you give, God said give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, shall God cause men to give unto your bosom. It is the law of God, God's law of, of sowing and reaping when you give. Now you listen to me. You, you listen, this, this TBN, Brother Daryl Turner calls it the theologically brain dead network. These jokers, these charlatans that get on there and call themselves preachers and say, uh, if you'll send a thousand dollars, God's going to make you a millionaire. Uh, I'm telling you, you, better put that money back in your pocket. Don't send it to them charlatans. Uh, they, they say, uh, if you'll send us so a, a love seed uh, of five thousand uh, dollars, mama, your boy that's been in prison, uh, God's going to open the door and send him home. Just stand at the door and wait. Uh, I'm telling you, they'll stand before God and answer for such nonsense but it is a principle of God that when you give what belongs to God I'm telling you God in return will give back to you God will bring you along God will bless you it's not always with material things but God will prosper you as your heart and your soul prospers in him can you say man in this modern church world Many people feel like it's too burdensome to give God one-tenth of their income. They say it's too much. I can't afford to give God ten cents of every dollar that I make. I'd say to you, according to the Bible, you cannot afford, you can't afford not to give what belongs to God. I'm telling you, I'd rather have the 90 cents and the blessing, Brother Benny. Let God have that 10 cent off of every dollar. I'd rather have the 90 cent and the blessing than to have the whole dollar and to be under the curse of God Almighty. I'm telling you the tithe belongs to God. It doesn't belong to the restaurant. It doesn't belong to Direct TV. It doesn't belong to Honda Financial. It doesn't belong to the mortgage company. The tithe belongs to God. And if you give God what belongs to Him, I'm telling you in return uh, there'll be some windows in heaven fly open uh, and God will bless you abundantly can you say man tonight the tithe belongs in the treasury of the Lord I know where I'm preaching at tonight I know I'm preaching to people who give I know that but I'm just telling you friend there are some folks who say I love the Lord but they say I can't afford just to give him everything but if we'd understand he already owns it anyway, everything's already his anyway. I had a man tell me years ago, he was going through a Bible study at his church, a, a financial study at his church. And I don't know if the pastor did the study or somebody else come in. Nevertheless, they, they told him, they said, listen, you're a Christian and we know you've got bills. We understand there's, there's things going on that you have to pay. 
So we want to do a, 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 you know, a practice with you where we want to bring you along. We want you to start out giving 2% to God. Then after a while, when you can do 2%, then we're going to give you, get you to 4%. Then when you can give 4%, they're going to bring you to 60%. The intention was to get them all the way up to where God said to start with, to begin with. We're going to bring you along to try to get you up to 10%. It may take two or three years. I'm telling you, friend, until you gave the 10%, you've not given God the tithe. The tithe means one-tenth. Every dollar that I make, 10% goes to God, 90% goes in my pocket. Can you say amen? It belongs to the Lord. Key speed, that evangelist said, he said, Brother Shelton, is, I've heard him preach it too. He said, I've learned through the years of carrying the gospel. He said, no matter how much I fast, no matter how hard I pray, no matter how much I study, no matter how long and how loud I preach he said, I've learned that I cannot lay my hand on uh, and pronounce a blessing on anything uh, that God has put a curse on. Come on, say amen. In the book of Joshua 6 and 7, this was the difficulty here that Achan encountered and the reason that he and his family were stoned to death. That first city when they entered into Canaan land was Jericho. And the Bible said when they come into Jericho, uh, amen, they're going to overthrow this city. You know the story. Uh, they didn't have to fire a shot. Uh, they didn't have to pull the cannons out. They didn't have to, you know, scale the walls. Uh, they didn't have to trench under. Uh, God told them, said, just march around uh, one time a day for six days. Uh, and on the seventh day, uh, march around seven times. On that seventh time, shout. Uh, and God's going to give you the victory. And the walls are going to fall down flat. That first city they encountered was Jericho. And God told them that when they come into Jericho, he told them plainly, he didn't hold any punches about this. He said that when you conquer Jericho, all the spoils of that city, all the treasury of Jericho is to be put in the treasury of the Lord. In other words, what he's saying here uh, is that all the first fruits belong to him uh, when they defeated that city of Jericho. Uh, Jericho was the tithe. Joshua 6 and 19, uh, God said, But all the silver and the gold and all the vessels of brass and iron, speaking of Jericho, are consecrated unto the Lord. Uh, they shall come into the treasury of the Lord. They were going to go in. They were going to defeat Jericho. The walls fell down flat. God gave them a great victory there that day. The next city they were going to encounter was Ai. And this is what God told his people. He said, you give me the spoil at Jericho. And the next city is Ai. And when I give you that city, all the spoil of that city will belong to you. Jericho was the tithe. It was the first fruit to be brought into the treasury house of the Lord. But then God went on further and God warned them and he told them that if they used it for their personal use rather than giving it to him, I, he said there's going to be a curse placed on them. And we know how Achan disobeyed the Lord. I don't know why he did that. I, I mean, here's a man been blessed by God. Here's a man who's crossed that Jordan River into Canaan land. Here's a man who's watched God bring city walls down, walls that seemed impenetrable, but God brought them down to the dust. And here's a man that so God gave him a great victory, and all he had to do was give God what belonged to him, but Achan coveted after that accursed thing. The Bible said he robbed God, took it to his tent, Furnished his tent with it. And now he's cursed. God said in Joshua 7 and 13. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies. Until you take away the accursed thing from among you. You listen to me. All that silver and all that gold, when it was in the midst of Israel, when it was in their possession, God called it an accursed thing. But if they had put it in the treasury the way the Lord had commanded them, it was called the devoted thing. It was holy unto God Almighty. But because they robbed God at Jericho, they could not defeat Ai. They could not go any further into that land. 
matter of fact, the Bible said Joshua sent fewer men to Ai because it was a smaller city, but because there was a curse placed upon them, because they robbed God of that holy thing, 36 innocent men lost their lives in that battle of Ai, and they could not take that city. I wonder how many people today in churches Keep the church from moving forward and flowing in the spirit the way God wants it to be. Because they've got the accursed thing. They've robbed God of what belongs to Him. Nod your pretty heads at me tonight. The same is always true for us. The tithe belongs to God. If it's not given to Him, then in our hands it becomes an accursed thing. I said in our hands it becomes an accursed thing. You listen to me. I've watched it down through the years, Brother Boy. I've watched people hold on to what belonged to God. I've watched people that, you know, that wouldn't give him what belonged to them. I'm telling you, God's going to get it some way or another. You give it to that doctor. You give it to that mechanic. Somehow or another, God's going to get what belongs to him out of our pockets, out of that pocket, and out of that pocketbook. When it's in our hands, it is an accursed thing. But when we bring it to God, when we give it to the Lord of glory in obedience, it becomes a devoted thing. It is a holy thing and it comes with a blessing up to the giver. Can you say man? No man or woman, Christian or non-Christian, can afford to rob God of what belongs to him. Achan coveted what belonged to God and he kept it for himself but it cost him his life and it cost his whole family not until they removed that accursed thing. Not until they, they dealt with Achan and his family, his children, uh, all of his cattle, everything associated with that man uh, was stoned and then burned as if it had never been. Can you say amen? People think God plays games. God doesn't play games like we think he does. God takes his word serious. He expects us to obey his word. Listen to me. It cost Achan and his family their lives. They paid a heavy price for that accursed thing. I'm telling you, if he'd give it to God like he should have, it would have been a blessing to him and his family. Once they removed that accursed thing, they were able to go on and to defeat Ai and able to keep the spoil of that city. I'm just telling you, it still pays to obey the Lord. It pays to do us right by the word of God. We take what belongs to God through covetousness. We're using it for our own material benefit. We're guilty of desecrating God's holy money. The tithe belongs to God. I remember some years ago, we had somebody in this church got to stealing money. None of you. I mean literally pickpocketed. And they got so bad. We, we didn't know who it was. We, you know, I'm watching like a hawk. And uh, it got so bad we had to get the ladies, the sisters, when they come to the elders, y'all remember that? Had to bring your pocketbook with you. Somebody in the church snatching money. And uh, didn't know for sure who it was. Couldn't have been Scott. He wasn't here then. <laughs> Scott said it wasn't me. Nevertheless, we're watching. We're trying to figure out. I'm praying. God, show me who this is. I mean, they were good at it. They'd been good at robbing banks. Now, I'm going to tell you, you can think about it what you want, but I'd be scared to death to do something like that in God's house. Nevertheless, we found out it was a teenager. None of you, none of these sweet kids here. It was a teenager here that was going in and taking money. We had the prayer room open. People would come early. They'd pray. They'd leave their purses. I, you know, we didn't have the cameras then. Smile. You're being watched right now. We didn't have the cameras then. And so when they go back there to pray, that young man would go around going through purses, taking stuff. 
I finally told the ladies in the church, just bring your purses to the order till we figure out who it is. And there was a service. We were out here. I think it was a Sunday night service. And I can see it right now like it was yesterday. I had just finished preaching. We had given the order call. Sister Blanche is sitting right where she normally does, maybe one pew up. I can't remember. Nevertheless, she used to take the offering plates and put them under the pew in front of her. When she got the offering, she'd lay it there until after the service. And I saw this young man sitting over there, one pew in front of her. Matter of fact, I watched him walk over and sit down where, right in front of where she sits. And when everybody come to the altar, I, I noticed him lay down in the pew where he's got my attention now. And he doesn't know I'm watching him, but I got my eyes on him. And I thought, why is that boy laying down like that? That's weird. I've watched him get up, come across the building, uh, go over here and sit down. Uh, and now he's laying down. Look like he's under the pew doing something. So while you're praying in the spirit, I, I got in my flesh. No, I didn't. But I wanted to. And I walked back there, uh, and he didn't know I was coming. And he was reaching under there at the offering plate. And I said, what are you doing? He got about three shades of red. And he sat up. He said, I was just resting. I, I said, son, what are you doing that offering plate? I, he said, I wasn't doing nothing. I, he was going to take money. I, we found out that's who it is. I sat down and had a talk with, the, you know, his dad and told him what was going on. He denied it. I, I said, listen, I, that's not going to happen in this church. I, listen, I said all that to say this. I, but there are Christians, people who say they love God, I, who sat on our pew pulpit, on our pews from service to service uh, who would say I would never uh, put my money in the offering plate uh, and take money out of that. Uh, that's a sin. That's wrong. Uh, but yet they'll come down to the altar. Uh, they'll sing in the choir. Uh, they'll worship God. Uh, and all the while they've got God's money in their pocketbook. Uh, they've got God's money in their pocket. Uh, they're taking it from the offering plate uh, and they refuse to give it to God. You tell me what the difference is is today not just sweet heads at me and smile we say I would never go up there and take out of the offering plate but what's the difference when you withhold what belongs to God from the offering plate that little boy didn't claim to be a Christian he was a sinner but there are people who call themselves Christians who will rob God. None of you, I'm just saying, you know, Christians in general. We have to recognize God owns everything. It all belongs to Him. We are stewards of everything of His. We're stewards of the land. When He created Adam and Eve, He created them to, to watch over the land. Well, they messed that up. We've been messing it up ever since. Look at what we've done to his land. And look at the earth, we, what we've done to this earth. Look at what we've done to this nation. Come on now. Look at what we've done to his church. God is the giver of everything. God's the owner of everything. God puts it in our hands and expects us to be obedient to his word and to be good stewards of it all. He said in Psalms 84, 11, and 12, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he hold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in him. When we begin to release uh, God's portion to him, uh, then God releases in return back to us. Uh, and we have the freedom that comes from serving him. Uh, listen to me, friend. Uh, I don't just owe God the tithe. Uh, I owe him my body. Uh, I owe him my heart. Uh, I owe him my soul. Uh, everything that I am, everything that I have, uh, it all belongs to God Almighty. Uh, he's the giver of it all and it's no big deal no big thing to offer to him what belongs to him you can't afford not to have you withheld from God have you robbed God have you kept what belonged to him God told Israel to remove the accursed thing 
from you. Now, I want to say this with love in my heart because you know me. We've got folks. Are we live streaming? We have folks that hadn't been to church during this pandemic, this local church. Not only are they not coming to church, but they ain't giving God what belongs to Him. Now, I don't know how you feel about it, but I'd be shaking in my shoes. I'd be scared to death to not give to God what belongs to God. We had a couple of years ago that come to this church that gave really good tithes in this church. They paid big tithes. When they left the church, your first thought is, Sister Blanche, same thing. That's a lot of tithes going to be going out of here every, every year. You, you, she and I were just talking about it here the other day. I'm telling you, friend, we've never missed a beat, have we, Sister Blanche? We've never missed one dime. Come on here now. I said we've never missed one dime of it. God is just, if you do what's right, if you give God what belongs to Him, uh, you know, we even tithe the tithe to the church of God uh, out of this church. Uh, when you tithe in, we tithe the tenth of that uh, into the church of God. Uh, when you give the way you're supposed to give, uh, when we give according to the Word of God, uh, I'm telling you, you don't have to worry. Uh, when we go through pandemics, uh, you don't have to worry. When the White House changes presidents, there are people that are scared to death right now. They're afraid of this economy. They're afraid of job loss. But I'm telling you, the Apostle Paul said, But my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. When you give what belongs to God, if God has to send ravens to feed you in the morning and feed you at night, if God has to send you by a widow, woman's house God's gonna supply your every need can somebody give him praise in this house tonight my God my God Woo! you don't have to be afraid you don't have to worry then you do what's right by God's word God's gonna take care of you God's gonna make sure the need not our greeds but our needs are all met Anybody ever heard of William Colgate? I'm closing right here. William Colgate came from a very poor family. At the age of 16, he had to leave his home because his family couldn't afford to house him and his family couldn't afford to feed him. You imagine that having to send your child away from home because we just don't have enough to take care of you. On his way to his future, the story says he met an old friend who was the captain of a canal boat. That captain asked him where he was off to. Where are you going? He replied, I, I don't really know. He told him, he said, it's good to be on your own, but you've got to start off right. And if you start off right, everything's going to be fine. That young man replied, he said, the only trade that I know is, is working with soap and candle making. That canal captain, his friend, said, you know, that's enough. Let's pray and ask the Lord to give you wisdom and to give you insight and then off you will go. So they prayed and the captain prayed that, that William Colgate would be the leading soap maker in New York. Uh, William was excited. Then the captain gave him some more advice. He told him to give his life to Christ and make sure he gave the Lord all that belonged to him. He explained to him about tithes and offerings and ex exhorted him to make an honest soap and have integrity. Anybody believe Christians are still supposed to be people of integrity? Do what you say you're going to do. Keep your word. When William arrived in New York and got a job in a soap factory, the first dollar he earned, he gave 10%. He gave a dime of it to God. After years of hard work, the story says, he became a partner with that man. Then when the man passed away, William Colgate become the sole owner of that business. And he always remembered to give 10 cents of every dollar to the Lord from the very first dollar that he ever made. When he became more and more wealthy, he instructed his bookkeeper to keep a line item account where his 10% of his gross always went to an account with the Lord. This money always went to the Lord's work. He prospered quicker than he ever could have imagined. 
He then instructed his bookkeeper to give the Lord's account 20%, then 30%, then 40%, then 50%. He went on and educated his family, taught his family uh, about giving to God and giving the Lord the tithe. And, and he told everybody that he met the reason of his success, the reason he had prospered the way that he was. Uh, it's because he had always honored God first in his life. He accomplished all the plans of his life and more that he set out to accomplish. He continued prospering until at the end of his life. Eventually, he would go on to give nearly every bit of his income to the work of God. His name became famous all over the world. Before he died, he gave away millions and millions of dollars to the Lord's work. He became fam famous all over the world and he always gave God the glory. He was faithful to God and his name is still with us today on every tube of toothpaste that you get from the store that says Colgate on it. Started with nothing but tied off the very first dollar that he ever owned. As God began to bring him along, he began to tie 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%. Until eventually God had blessed him so that he was given nearly every bit of his income coming into that business solely to the work of God. It's God's law, sowing and reaping. I'm not telling you if you give to God, you're going to become a millionaire. You probably won't. You know why God don't give most people million do millions of dollars? Because he knows it would ruin us. We'd be on that yacht on Sunday rather than in God's house. We'd be at that condo at the beach rather than being in church. Come on now. God knows what he's doing. You pray for a million dollars, you'll just have a million more problems. I'm not telling you if you give to God what belongs to him, you're going to become a millionaire. But what I am telling you is this, that God's going to take care of you and God's going to supply every need that you're ever going to have in this life. I read the story. Come on, sister, get ready to pray. We're going to play. We're going to close. I read the story of a family. In a church that ran a family farm. They didn't make a lot of money. They didn't have health insurance. That wife began having heart problems. And was hospitalized several times. Back and forth out of the emergency room. In and out. In and out. And while they're taking care of all this. The medical bills. Began to total up. And began to add up. And it became their bills. They were paying out medically. Became as much as their yearly income. But they said of this family, this little farming family who didn't have much, they said they continued to give God His first out of everything that they earned. And each bill that come due, they paid it. They paid it. They paid it. They gave God His. And then they paid the bill. At the end of the year, dealing with all that sickness, in and out of the hospital, all those medical bills, at the end of the year, all their bills were paid. They did miss a bill. And they got down and began to calculate, and they discovered that God had doubled their farm income from that previous year. God gave them twice that year when they needed it because of sickness. They never missed the tithe, and they never missed a bill. God supplied the need. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! God does what he says he'll do. It takes faith to give him. My mom and daddy, when they first got saved, they were young Christians. They didn't, you know, we were blessed growing up. We didn't have, we didn't have a lot extra, but we always had, didn't we? They always took care of me and my brother. Always gave us a great Christmas. Always had food on the table. Always had clothes on our back. I was blessed. I grew up in a great home. Blessed. My good parents. They didn't know. They, they didn't really understand tithe when they got saved. And they started, you know, they had their bills come and do. The bills don't stop. But they sat down and made sure they gave God his first. And God just blessed them and brought them along. You heard Brother Albright tell the story when he got saved. He had to, before he got saved, he'd have to be at the bank on Monday morning. Soon as they opened to make sure he got that paycheck in there to cover the bills. 
He said, but then I got saved. You can help me if I'm wrong here. He said, then I got saved, started tithing, started giving God the first tenth of everything that I earned. He said, and I noticed I, I didn't have to get to the bank first thing on Monday morning. He said, I didn't make any more money, didn't have any less bills. I just started having more money there. Is that right? I, I'm just telling you, Sister Blanche has even said before, I, here at the church, I, she's had to go back and recalculate I, because it just doesn't add up. I don't know where it's coming from. I, we've had to do that personally. I, I keep up with our ledger. I, I thought, dear God, did I miss something here? Something don't add up right. I got more left over than what I thought I was going to have. I'm just telling you, friend, I, if you give to God, if you obey the Lord if you be obedient in return God will take care of you and your family can somebody shout amen give it cheerfully he loves you when you give cheerfully he loves that when you give cheerfully I've heard of people that have said that when we got saved and we started tithing we didn't have enough and we added our bills up, and we're going to give God His first. We didn't have enough left over to pay the bills for that month, but somehow the bills always got paid that month. Whether it be God laying on somebody else's heart to give somebody a piece of money. People used to do that, you know. People used to be in tune with God like that. They would listen to God. My grandfather, am I being too chatty? i got to close here in just a little bit. I'm closing after this one, I promise. Well, I'm not going to promise. You know me. My grandfather's a young preacher. Got invited to preach at a brush arbor or maybe in somebody's home, maybe a home. I believe it was a home. Uh, somewhere down the road, pretty good little ways down the road, and they didn't have enough gas, money. They had enough gas to get down there. Uh, you know, they had their money set for the week. They had enough to get down there, but not enough to get back home. And he said, we're going. All oh, people used to do things like that. He didn't say, well, let me wait till I get some finances worked out, then we'll come. He said, we're going. Going to go by faith. Going to do it by faith. It's all by faith. It's a walk of faith. Got in that car. They drove down to that house. Went there and preached that night. And on the way out, they didn't have enough money to get back home. Didn't have enough gas to get them all the way back to, the, to their home. But they got in the car getting ready to leave. And he said, all of a sudden, a lady come out the door and said, wait a minute, Brother Shelton. Hang on just a minute. God told me to give you this. And there was enough money to pay for their gas and also had enough left over to help buy with some of the groceries that week. I'm telling you, friend, God's not bankrupt. The heavens are not bankrupt. God's not in financial trouble. This nation's in financial trouble. A lot of people are in a financial mess simply because they won't do what's right by the, by the money with God. But I'm telling you, when you do what's right, God will bless even a sinner when it comes to obeying His Word. They can't go to heaven being a sinner, but God will still prosper them while they're here. It's God's law of sowing and reaping. So when we give to God in return, you don't have to worry. You rob God, you better be worried. I would be worried. But when you give what belongs to Him, and you can lay your head on your pillow at night and not have to worry. Time will not permit me to tell you story after story. Ah, oh, Brother Gary, of the time as a young preacher. Young Christian. Didn't make a lot of money, didn't have a lot. But we gave what we were supposed to give to God and then some. How that God would come down times and there wouldn't be enough left over for something. But every single time, every time, there'd be a check in the mail. Don't even know where some of them come from, why we even got them. He can make money show up in your dryer, can't he, Sister Tina, when you don't have a dime left. He can make you look in your pocketbook or your wallet and look again and say, I don't remember that being in there, that $20. God's going to do what His Word says. Let's do what He says. Let's stand, please. Everybody stand.
People get nervous when you preach about money. I don't. I don't even get nervous preaching about it. The great reformist Martin Luther said, there are three conversions of a man, the head, the heart, and the pocketbook. He said the pocketbook's the hardest for God to get. Money in itself is not evil. The Bible said the love of money is the root of all evil. Jesus had more to say about our giving than he did about our going to heaven, going to hell. Money, when it comes to God, is a very serious matter. This is a great church. This is a giving church. Sister Blanche is the clerk. She'll testify. This is a giving church. You folks give. In return, God blesses you and helps you and keeps you. said it before, I believe if everybody in church had called themselves was a Christian would never have to do hot dog sales would never have to do sub sales to raise money if everybody gave what was supposed to be given everybody tithe the way they were supposed to tithe and give the offering to God wouldn't have to do all the extra things that a lot of churches have to do just to keep the lights on every month. It's not that the money is not there, it's just in people's pockets. God said, Will a man rob God? But you've robbed me. Wherewith have we robbed you? He said, In the tithe and in the offering. You're cursed with a curse. He said, But prove me now herewith. In other words, bring to me what's supposed to be brought to me. See if I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings. That there won't be room for you to receive. Every head bowed and every eye closed tonight. I want to ask you here. You know, it's not between you and me. But it is between you and God. you're here and you'd say brother Shelton I, I need to get some things right with him tonight I need to make some things right I don't know how you believe it but I don't believe a man that's going around robbing banks is ready for heaven do you nor do I believe a man or woman that'll rob God is ready for that place The other question I would have is, why would you want to keep what belongs to God? I'd rather have the 90 cent in his blessing than have the whole dollar and be cursed. If you'd say, Brother Shelton, I've robbed God. I've not given to him what belongs to him. These altars are open for you to come tonight and make that right. Repent of that. You need to repent of that. The Bible said if you know to do good, you don't do it to him as sin. If you know you're supposed to give God his tithe and you don't do that. There's a, there's a young lady that used to come to this church. She's not a church right now. We're praying she'll come back. She's out there in that world. She don't claim to be anything right now. But she still sends her tithes to this church. Isn't that right? She sends her tithes to this church. She pays and gives what belongs to God. I didn't expect too many to come running down here tonight because folks don't want to admit that. And maybe everybody does tithe like they're supposed to in this church. My heart's prayers that you do. But I know how the devil tries to tempt people. And I know how he tries to put in that mind that you just can't afford to give to God what belongs to him. You just can't make it if you do. You won't make it if you don't. Anybody here tonight would say, Brother Shelton, I, I'm not rendered to God what I need to render to him. And I want to come make that right tonight. 
Would you come right now? I'm afraid what people are going to think about me. I'd be more concerned about what God knows about me than what anybody thinks about me. That's you. Would you come? I don't believe I preach this message just to hear my own voice. Brother Shelton, I've not given to God what belongs to Him. But I realize the tithe is holy unto the Lord. And I want to make that right with Him tonight. Would you come right now? Would you come quickly? Would you come? 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 Sister Albright shared with me a few years ago when she was, before she retired. I know she don't look old enough to be retired. She is retired. She was working a lot of hours. You remember that, don't you, sister? Six days a week. Sometimes, a few times, she had to work on Sunday, if I remember correctly. She'd come to church. She'd be wore out. I could see it. Tired. Make you tired just living Brother Albright. Wouldn't that just wear you out? <laughs> She's a strong woman. He's a good man. She told me something, Brother Gary, that just stuck in my heart. She said, you know, the good thing about me working all these hours, I'm making more money and I can give more tithe to God. Wow, that's a heart that loves to give there. Instead of grumbling and complaining and saying, oh, dear God, I've got to work all this so terrible, so awful. She said, I can give more. I can give more to the church. Oh, God, give us all that kind of heart that we love to give what belongs to Him. We do it cheerfully. I want to close this service, and everybody that will, that you're comfortable doing, I want you to come and stand around this altar, please. If you're not comfortable, you can stay at your pew, but if you're comfortable, put your mask on. I want you to come and stand around this altar. We want to close this service right here tonight, this altar.